does ozone therapy cause a Herxheimer reaction? Yes, ozone therapy can absolutely trigger a Herxheimer reaction. So you absolutely can expect to first get worse before you start getting better, because that's exactly what happens during a Herx. Now, during the past year and a half, around two years, a lot of people bought their own ozone equipment, which is great. I believe this is one of the best investments you can do nowadays. And so before you start treating yourself with ozone at home, you should be aware of what can happen. And a Herxheimer reaction is one of those things that can occur. But let's go step by step. So in this video, I will first explain what is a Herxheimer reaction, what are the symptoms of our Herxheimer reaction, and which ozone treatments are more or less likely to trigger a Herx. So if you are completely new to medical treatments or any type of therapeutical treatments, then you may have never heard about a Herxheimer reaction and you may not know what this is. So a Herxheimer reaction, this is the phenomenon of first getting worse before getting better. And now it is important that this is a phenomenon which is absolutely recognized by conventional medicine. So this is not some fringe idea by alternative healthcare providers. Uh, this is something that the school medicine says that, so yes, we know about this, uh, this is a real thing. And so this has been well documented and studied. Now, the thing is, we don't exactly know why the Herxheimer reaction happens. There are certain theories. So the theory says that bacteria, when they're killed, they emit endotoxins or lipoproteins, and that those lipoproteins trigger an inflammatory response by the body. And so that this inflammation, that this is a Herxheimer reaction. Now, as I said, this is a theory. This is, we don't know for sure whether that's exactly what happens. But there is a small difference how alternative medicine views Herxheimer reactions and how conventional medicine looks at them. So conventional medicine says that uh, this is something that is mostly observed with bacterial infections sometimes also with parasitical and fungal infections, but not so much with viral infections. Now, alternative medicine says that basically any type of infection can trigger a Herxheimer reaction, and this includes also viral infections. And uh, some doctors, for example, Dr. David Brownstein, he says in his book, Ozone, the Miracle Therapy, he says that he has also observed Herxheimer reactions in cancer patients who were given vitamins and other nutrient IVs. Now, I believe he may be confusing the Herxheimer reaction with a refeeding syndrome, which is something very similar, and that happens in patients who are severely vitamin deficient and when they are giving those vitamins that they are deficient in. And so sometimes there's also a, an initial worsening before they start getting better, and this is called the refeeding syndrome but not necessarily a Herxheimer reaction because um, when you give someone vitamins, nothing is actually killed off. Well, with the exception of vitamin C, maybe. Um, so, but in any case, he says that he sees Herxheimer reactions uh, in all sorts of conditions. So how does it feel when you go through a Herxheimer reaction? When do you know that this is actually what you're going through and that you're not experiencing an adverse reaction? So a Herxheimer reaction, the typical uh, symptoms are some of the ones that I already mentioned. So in general, this is like a malaise, like a flu-like sensation. So you feel run down, you can experience joint pain, tachycardia, so an elevated heart rate. Uh, you can experience low blood pressure, rashes can come up, uh, chills, headaches, sweating, you feel fatigued, uh, there can be rigor, uh, especially in your neck, and hyperventilation, so a rapid uh, breathing rate. So all those things can also occur when you do ozone therapy. But in addition to this, there are certain Herxheimer reactions which are very specific for certain types of ozone treatments. 
So, for example, ozone saunas are known to cause a very itchy red rash. And so the rash looks like tiny, small red pimples that are very itchy. And the itchiness can get worse and worse to the point that it does not allow uh, the person to fall asleep. So this is something that is very specific for ozone saunas. Then uh, vaginal insufflations, for example, can cause a sensation of warmth, itchiness or light burning, but uh, it usually lasts only a few minutes during the vaginal insufflation. And it is also believed that this is because of a Herxheimer reaction uh, and that some bacteria or yeast are being killed off by the ozone, that that's what causes those sensations of warmth or burning. Then another ozone treatment which has a very, very high rate of uh, what is assumed that those are Herxheimer reactions are ear insufflations. So ozone ear insufflations, they are known to cause severe pain, liquid discharge, scabbing, uh, itchiness, and the pain can really be absolutely excruciating. And it is also believed that this is some type of a detox reaction triggered by the ozone, most likely through the lymph fluid. Drinking ozonated water can also cause nausea, stomach cramps, stomach upset, weakness, um, coughing up of phlegm. Again, this is also believed to be because the ozone is killing something off. Rectal insufflations are known to cause bloating, cramps and various discharges that look like rope worms. And it is not entirely clear whether those are Herxheimer reactions or just adverse effects of rectal insufflations. But in general, most of those reactions after ozone treatments are taken as a sign that the treatment is working and it needs to be continued. So in general, Herxheimer reactions after ozone treatments are taken as something positive. So how often do Herxheimer reactions after ozone therapy happen? How likely is it that you will go through one of those Herxes once you start treating yourself with ozone? Well, in order to answer this question, we need to distinguish between two different types of ozone treatments. So there are invasive treatments and non-invasive. And the invasive treatments are less likely to trigger a Herxheimer reaction. And the non-invasive treatments are more likely to trigger a Herx. So invasive treatments are all those types of treatments which involve puncturing of the skin. So if there is a needle involved and if you're being punctured with a needle, so specifically here we're talking about intravenous ozone treatments. So things like major autohemotherapy, ozonated saline IV, DIV, ten pass or multi-pass. So all those types of intravenous ozone treatments are less likely to produce a Herxheimer reaction. And everything that is non-invasive, so it does not require needles and puncturing, so things like insufflations, ozone sauna, drinking ozonated water, full body bag or lymph bagging and so forth, they are more likely to cause Herxheimer reactions. All right, so how likely is it? So Dr. Brownstein, who is, by the way, one of the, essentially he is the only ozone expert who wrote a book that I know of who mentions Herxheimer reactions. And he says that he sees those in around 5% of his ozone patients. But unfortunately, he does not specify with which type of ozone treatments. And I know that he applies different ozone treatments. So I know that he's treated, last year he's treated some patients with intramuscular ozone injections. Uh, but here in his book, he also mentions major to hemotherapy. So he doesn't specify, he doesn't say whether one of those treatments uh, have a higher rate of Herxheimer reactions uh, versus the other. Now, whereas when you look at the non-invasive ozone treatments, so there the rate is considerably higher. Now, we don't have any hard data because this is not something that has ever been documented. There's no study that has ever been conducted on this topic. 
Uh, but me, from observation, from talking to people, I estimate that, for example, when it comes to ozone saunas, 9 out of 10 people will experience this itchy rash if they perform the ozone saunas frequently enough, uh, long enough, at, uh, and at a sufficiently high rate of ozone concentration. The same is true for ear insufflations or even more so. I would say that 9 out of 10 or 99 out of 100 people who do ear insufflations with the direct method and if they do them frequently enough, so if they do them three times a week or five times a week or more, and if they do them for several minutes or longer at a concentration of a minimum of 20 micrograms per milliliter, they will experience quite uncomfortable and sometimes really daunting effects, which, as mentioned, are believed to be Herxheimer reactions. And this is something that I've already made a video about, about the risks of ear insufflations that I will be linking to either here or here. And so this is something that everyone should watch before they start doing ear insufflations, because this is quite common and their reaction can be really borderline traumatizing. So yes, some ozone treatments are very likely to trigger Herxheimer reactions and others less so. But uh, here's the interesting part. So although Herxheimer reactions seem to be the most discussed topic in the ozone community, it is as good as completely absent from professional literature. So I have looked up in several books. So I have looked up the Madrid Declaration and there is not a mention of a Herxheimer reaction, healing crisis, detox reaction, kill of reaction, none of this. Also Dr. Frank Schallenberg, I have two of his books, uh, doesn't mention it uh, either. Neither does Dr. Renate Fiebern Hensler, who is a world-renowned German ozone expert. I also have two books of her, not a word on the topic. And I have also a series of other ozone books and it is as good as completely... No, it is completely absent from most ozone books. It is never discussed. Not even Professor Bocci has mentioned such a thing. Now, I have not read his book from start to finish. Well, most of the books I haven't read them from start to finish, so maybe I have overlooked something. If I have, please let me know. But really, the only doctor who mentioned this in his book is Dr. David Brownstein. And here he describes on page 192 a textbook Herxheimer reaction after ozone treatment. So let me read this uh, back to you. So Miranda is a 51-year-old female who suffered from fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a condition characterized by having aching muscles and fatigue. I ache all the time, she said. Some days are better than others, but I don't have any good days. I have been to many doctors and they tell me to take antidepressants or pain pills. I feel worse on those medications. Miranda had tried many therapies with me before ozone, including the use of bioidentical, natural hormones, vitamin and mineral therapies and acupuncture. Ozone had the biggest response. After Miranda had a major autohemotherapy, MAH, with ozone, 120 cc of 70 gamma ozone mixed with 120 cc of her own blood and reinfused intravenously, she reported that she felt sick. I felt like I had the flu. I was achy and fatigued, but differently from my fibromyalgia symptoms. I called you and you thought this was a Herxheimer reaction and that I should take it easy until the symptoms passed. All the symptoms gradually went away in a week and I felt much better. I mean, my fibromyalgia symptoms were nearly gone. I couldn't believe it as I have not been pain-free for many years. After the second ozone IV, I became achy and fatigued, like after the first one, but this time it only lasted for a few days. Again, when I came out of it, I felt almost 100% pain-free. At this point, I knew it was working. I had a third ozone IV and felt the same achiness for only a day, then no pain. I could cry because I feel so much better. 
Now I am doing ozone at home rectally and I continue to feel great. This has totally changed my life. So this is really a very typical pattern of an ozone-induced Herxheimer reaction, namely that after each ozone treatment, there is a worsening that lasts several days. And then when it passes, there is a new level of well-being. And this pattern repeats after each successive ozone treatment. But each time the worsening lasts for a short amount of time until finally it's completely gone and then uh, you only experience an improvement. You only experience the benefits of the treatment. Now, this is one typical trajectory for an ozone-induced Herxheimer reaction, but there are also a number of others and I describe them in my upcoming book, The Ultimate Guide to Home Ozone Therapy. So, to summarize, does ozone therapy cause Herxheimer reactions? Well, yes, it can cause Herxheimer reactions and very pronounced ones. So this is something that people should be definitely aware of who starts doing ozone treatments. Now, this is not a guarantee, so not everyone goes through a Herxheimer reaction after ozone treatments. Some people only experience a steady improvement and there is no worsening at all. Uh, but there is a significant number of people who absolutely experience Herxheimer reactions. So this is something to always look out for when you undergo ozone treatments. One more thing you may have heard now, this is not news anymore, but it's still relevant. So you may have heard that now the government is in charge of uh, misinformation on social media, which I fully support. I think this is great because I'm all for meritocracy. So I think the best people at in a given field should be at the top of that field. And I mean, who is better at spreading misinformation than the government? So it only makes sense that they would be in charge of it right now. Uh, but for this reason, it's maybe a good idea to subscribe to my newsletter and you will find a link to it below the video. So thanks again and see you soon, hopefully. Bye-bye.